All right, it's finally Acid Week. Let's make some cool stuff today. We actually are going to need the God voice for this. Acid. Move your body. Acid. Okay, that's a lot of fun to do. So, okay, let's really get into this here. So, for now, let's go to a brand new preset. And before we really start dialing into making patches, I kind of want to walk you through my process of kind of building stuff with this type of sequencer. So, first off, what you probably notice is that we have drums, we have bass, and then we have our acid here. So while we have a new preset, let's go ahead and turn our reverb off because that can be a little bit misleading. We kind of want to start everything dry and kind of build upon that. So basically here in the drums, we have a very simplistic pattern here. Let's actually mute this for now. So really kick and a little bit of hi-hat, no snare yet because we're kind of just building stuff up here. And we add in a little bass line. And it's really just hitting on the same note, this F sharp here. Because at the end of the day, this acid sequencer is really about getting the groove out and kind of just feeling that groove. It is about melody at some point, but we do want to first build that groove and we want to get the vibe right first so we can kind of get a little bit more inspired to make some cool patches here. So what I kind of like to do as well is put at least just one note here in the piano roll just so we don't have to always hold down our key every single time so we can just loop it, change some knobs, change some stuff around and not have to worry about holding a note on our keyboard. So with that being said, let's kind of go here and uh, start building a patch. So like I said before, if we have a new preset, this is basically what we're greeted with. So the first thing we kind of need to do or what I'd like to do is going into advanced here and kind of taking a look at the sequencer and seeing what's happening. So it's just one note for 16 steps as we can see the step 16 right over here. So first things first, let's go ahead and delete all this by right clicking and removing all that so we have nothing just like my personality. And then let's go ahead and add one first note here and kind of just build the groove off the drums here. Okay, so that's kind of a decent groove here. Now we can kind of start adding a little bit of slide in here as well. So we have a basic groove, some a little bit of slide and accent here on the ninth step. And now we can kind of maybe change a little bit of the octaves to kind of spice things up a little bit here. Okay, so we kind of have something pretty basic going on here. This is kind of just the process of building up some cool old sequences. You can definitely spend a lot of time in this window here and kind of really fine tune things. But this is basically kind of just building things off from the very bottom. So I don't like to add distortion or any kind of effects here in the beginning because that can really kind of throw your perspective off because once you add distortion effects, obviously it's going to sound good. So if you get your sequence and the slide notes and everything like that sounding good first, and then you start adding distortion, you start adding effects, then it's really going to start bringing this patch to life. So at this point, let's call this okay for now. We can always come back and adjust some fine things, but we have a basic groove going on here. <laughs> So it's going to start adding a little bit of distortion and kind of see how that changes the sound and kind of pick our distortion algorithm here. And 
<laughs> yeah, tube is pretty aggressive. <laughs> Transistor has been one of my favorites for the entire plugin here. Aside from, I do like Tube a lot. It's pretty aggressive, like I was mentioned before. Diode's cool, and Crush is pretty cool as well. Crunch is, I guess, too, as well. But all, there's a lot of cool ones, but they kind of just fit differently depending on what you're what you're doing. So for this patch, we're going to stick with Transistor and then start working on the other stuff up here. So cutoff resonance, envelope mod, and so on and so forth. <laughs> Now at this point, a lot of these knobs here are something that you do want to automate or change over time because as the sequence keeps going, it can get a lot of, get really repetitive. So mo moving the cutoff, the resonance, envelope mod, and the decay, maybe a little bit of accents if you're actually using accents, which we are here on step nine. Those are gonna be knobs that you always wanna have moving and automating because as we know, sequences can get very repetitive. So that's why we kind of have to keep moving things or get into polyrhythms, which we're probably gonna get into later on in the uh, in the week here. But keep in mind, these are gonna be some knobs that you always kind of wanna have some motion to. At this point, you can add some sub oscillator here. You can, I don't really feel like I need to because I especially have the uh, bass already here and the, uh, Playlist here for Falcon, so I don't think I really need a sub os for this one here, so let's kind of move on. So what we could do here is do a little bit of modulation, so kind of just keep moving this cutoff, so maybe something kind of like this. Just so we have some kind of movement here, so we can drag this cross here, here, and kind of just like pigments, drag it on here and kind of give it the amount of depth that you would like. Maybe bring it down here, something kind of like that, and then maybe make this a little bit faster, maybe one over two. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> four might be a little nicer. Let's try that on the resonance as well. And as I said before, the envelope mod and the decay, a lot of these knobs you kind of want to be moving at the same time. And here's a cool trick I like doing as well as going to the sequencer and grabbing the same modulation source and bringing our gate down just a little bit and kind of modulating the gate with this as well. <laughs> So we're changing the time of the gate with this modulation, which kind of gives a pretty cool effect. Okay, so now we're sounding pretty decently good here. So let's kind of hop into the effects and kind of spice it up a little bit more. I found that especially with delays, the tape echo sounds almost the best for this here at an eighth note. So here's dry and we're going to kind of sneak that in a little bit. We really don't need too much of that in the uh, in the entire patch. For this reverb, I'm going to actually switch this out to the Chorus Juno 6 and just give a little bit of this here to kind of give us more of a stereo vibe. And then the third one here, what I also like doing is adding a little bit of multiband compression here. So the multiband under the dynamics and really kind of dialing in and scoping out or what do we, what do we, what do we call it? like grinding out our sound, I guess, something like that. <laughs> a little bit more of that nasally character. And you might think that I would add the reverb on the last slot here, but actually I prefer doing it outside of the plugin. I feel like this sounds a little bit better. So I'll actually show you here. So we have the reverb here and we're at, a, at kind of a basic kind of thing here. So kind of listen to this reverb first and then we're gonna do something outside of the plugin. <laughs> Sounds 
So it does sound good, not saying that, but it's just there's something extra once you do it outside of the plugin that I think really kind of ties that in. So let's disable this here for now and let's bring up our reverb here. So turn our send back on and take a listen now. And furthermore, we can always go up here to this arrow and we have access to a couple extra stuff here. I kind of like increasing this pitch tracking just a little bit to get a little bit of randomness more to it. And then the noise gain. So once you kind of bring this up here, it kind of gets a little bit more of the authentic noise. So check it out here. always add a little bit more bass boost in this situation i don't necessarily think that we need it but if you just have this patch by itself going and you don't have a bass or you want something to have this bass maybe you can add some sub oscillators or or increase the bass boost which i don't necessarily think i need it for this That's kind of the basic process I kind of like to go with, right? We're starting off at a very basic, boring sequence and kind of just keying a little bit of notes here and there and then kind of feeling that groove out and then starting to add a little bit of different notes, maybe a half step up or something like that. Not really going too melodic, but kind of just keeping it kind of basic, I guess, and then adding our slide notes, maybe some accents or stuff like that to kind of spice it up. After that, we can add some distortion, check out the different modules here of the distortion, and then start playing with the cutoff and resonance and doing maybe some cool little uh, modulation stuff to make things kind of interesting over time. And definitely, like I was saying, you do want to keep these automated throughout the song, because if you just have the pattern going over and over and over, our brains are kind of, kind of tune it out, right? So we kind of always want to slowly change things. <laughs> And you can absolutely attach macros to the cutoff and resonance. But in this case, for this plugin, I find it's kind of easier to just use these knobs here instead of reaching down for these smaller no macro knobs here. Totally up to you how you want to do that. Or you can have these macros control a lot of other things as far as effects go. So if you're curious how to do that, we can always click the gear icon here. And under macros, this is going to be the setting where you'd like to change things like that. So for example, if we were in our advanced settings and we're modulating effects with macros, like let's say we have movement for effects, we can double click this here call this effects and then we can always just remove these ones here if we want to right click and delete these and then we can say okay learn what do we want to learn let's say we want to do the tape echo we can click this and that's going to attach this here and then similar kind of in pigments but it's a little bit different we have our minimum and maximum here so when this is all the way at the top of the uh of the of the line here so when it's one we can see that this is going the full effect so if we don't necessarily want that we can just drag down our max here and kind of just go where we'd like to and kind of set the range in that way so yeah, depending on how you want to do it, that's how you would go about adding macros. And then you're going to see it down over here for effects. You can do that for the all the other ones if you'd like to. But that's just kind of the concept there as well. So definitely try to do this concept. I think you're going to have a little bit of an easier time making patches that way. So without further ado, this is Asset V again. And I'll put up this patch just in case if you like it for whatever reason, you can download it for free. <laughs> Thank you for watching and hopefully you learned something. We'll see you in the next video.